OK, let's take a look at a question on the Keynesian aggregate supply curve and the interaction with aggregate demand. Here's our question. If the aggregate supply curve is perfectly elastic, as in the Keynesian model, at low levels of national income, uh, an increase in aggregate demand will cause an increase in what? A, B, C or D? Press that pause button, have a think about the question, and then we'll come back to me in a few seconds with the, uh, with the right answer. OK, so aggregate demand has shifted out from AD1 to AD2. We're on the perfectly elastic portion of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. What will that cause? The answer is B, an increase in the level of real national output. It's not going to cause inflation, of course, because the price level will stay at P1. It's, so it's not A. It's not going to be C, an increase in real national output will increase tax revenues, for example, for the government, and perhaps reduce welfare benefits. So typically when a country is growing, the level of the fiscal deficit will go down. And it won't cause necessarily an increase in consumer debt. That's not really part of the model here. It could be the case that consumers have borrowed to bring about an increase in spending, which causes the AD curve to shift out. But that's cause rather than effect. So the answer isn't D. The perfectly elastic bit of the aggregate supply curve in the Keynesian model shows the existence of spare or excess capacity. What that means is it allows the level of real national output to, to grow, to expand through increases in aggregate demand without causing or triggering an increase in inflation. Clearly, as we get closer to capacity, level of national output, YF, the, the level of uh, inflationary pressure will increase.